Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us here on America's Now. Yes. What was your reaction when you heard OAS Secretary General Luis Almagro proposed a meeting to discuss suspending your country from the OAS? Is this unprecedented because there have been some inflammatory exchanges between Almagro and President Maduro? Well, I was surprised, but at the same time, I found that uh, Almagro was taking a kind of historical behavior because since he was appointed, he hasn't stopped of trying to intervene in Venezuelan domestic affairs. And he has abuse of his role as a general secretary. His act is on his own with no authorization from the member states. So I was surprised, but at the same time, we knew that he was, uh, it was going to be something like that when he started uh, trying to intervene in Venezuelan political domestic affairs. Some of the member states are calling for dialogue instead. Uh, some of them don't agree with what he's saying. Is it too late for dialogue? And, and what are you hearing from some of your counterparts in the region? It's never late to talk, to dialogue. If not, look at the U.S. I mean, they have started dialogues with Cuba, with Iran, with so many other countries where long histories of disputes and uh, misunderstandings in countries. And the dialogue has been promoted by the own, by the Venezuelan government. President Maduro is the one, not this time that we have a, an effort of uh, dialogue sponsored by UNASUR and uh, under the coordination of three former uh, ex presidents of Latin America. But in the past, this is not the first time that we have the uh, the initiative of promoting dialogue. And this is part of the problem because it doesn't make sense that on the one hand you are promoting dialogue and the OIS, the Permanent Council, which is the political body of the OIS, is supporting the dialogue in Venezuela at the same time. At the same time, the Secretary General of the organization is asking for a, a, a completely different position regarding Venezuela, basically going back to this idea of hostility against the country. So there is a clear contradiction of what the Permanent Council has said, which, and uh, in the declaration they did uh, the 1st of, Ju of June, offering the, the, the help of the OIS, but supporting the dialogue. And at the same time, Mr. Almagro, who has already taken a political position regarding Venezuela since many months ago, and that he's asking for a kind of suspension of confrontation with Venezuela. And the other important thing is that one thing is that are the member states and another thing is Mr. Almagro. Mr. Almagro sometimes he thinks that he would try to present himself as he was one another state. He's not. He was elected by the states to coordinate actions. He's not the president of the OAS and he has to act under uh, specific instructions of the Permanent Council and he hasn't done that. He has called or supports a recall referendum in your country. Um, and, and going back to dialogue, we've heard these reports that members of the government have already been meeting with members of the opposition in the Dominican Republic. I want to get your thoughts on that and if you've heard anything come out of that. Yeah, well, first, he's, I mean, the, the, the recall referendum is supposed in Venezuela because it was President Chavez that incorporate that in the Constitution. The political parties and the members of the opposition that are right now trying to use the recall referendum, they did not support the Constitution at the beginning that incorporate that figure. So we are the ones that support a recall referendum because we put it in the Constitution. So this is very important. And the recall referendum is in the Constitution. And so he doesn't have to support it because it's already there. Uh, so he'll try to confuse uh, the public opinion regarding that. And of course, uh, there is dialogue. As I said, this is a dialogue that has been promoted by the President Maduro with, the, with UNASUR and three, for, and three former ex-presidents. And that was supported by the Permanent Council of the OIS in the declaration of June the 1st. So this is what we have now. We have to give dialogue time to 
unfold. So it doesn't make too much sense that at, on the one hand you are promoting dialogue, and on the other hand, hand this guy, Almagro, is insisting in a, in a meeting uh, of the Permanent Council to discuss his own opinion regarding Venezuela. He did a report with no mandate. No one asked him to do it. And in the OAS, if you write a report, it's because you have been instructed to do it by one of the bodies of the organization, being the General Assembly or the Permanent Council. At the same time, he's embracing the, pos the political position of the opposition, the ideas of the opposition. The Venezuelan government have was, has not, uh, was not consulted about this report. So it's a very biased report. and. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't reflect the situation of Venezuela. So we, as Venezuela, we reject that report because it's, it's illegal, it's politically biased, and it does not help to the process of dialogue that we are now uh, going on, is going on in Venezuela. Late President Hugo Chavez had called the OAS worthless with Mercosur, Unicera, Salac, and other regional blocs, where do you think the OAS fits? And, and do you think Venezuela will leave the OAS on its own? We think that, I mean, in, 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 there is a new wave of integration in Latin America. We have new organizations like ALBA, UNASUR, CELAC. There are all organizations like the OIS, for example, <clears throat> there are new relationships among integration mechanisms. Like, for example, there is a lot of relationship between ALBA and CARICOM. We also have PetroCaribe, that uh, is another initiative. So I think what we have is uh, that, ex that it reflects the complexity of the, of the hemisphere. For us, the OIS plays a role because it's a way of connecting and, and participating with countries like Canada and, and the U.S. in the same table. So OAS should be the organization that allows Latin American countries to sit down and Caribbean countries to sit down with U.S. and Canada. And I think this is important. This is important. Ambassador, what do you think will happen when the OAS meets to discuss Venezuela? I think uh, more and more countries understand that uh, Mr. Almagro has been uh, abusing of his role of Secretary General. Also, there is a, more and more people know that he has lost the diplomatic role that a man uh, in that position should have, that he is a biased person, that he has a political uh, stand regarding Venezuela, and he does he represent. Uh, you know, he's, he's taking the, the agenda of some political uh, actors and uh, players in Venezuela. And, and for that, my feeling is that more and more people uh, are convinced that he has lost the legitimacy to talk about Venezuela. It's going to harm the U.S., the, the, the OIS. The OIS is, a, is, a, is, a, is an institution that has uh, lost a lot of credibility over the, over the years. And I think, unfortunately, Almagro is, is, is not helping at all the, the, the OIS to gain or regain his, its credibility. Ambassador Bernardo Alvarez, thank you so much for joining us on America's Now. It's a pleasure.